Hi, so this is the fourth video in the playlist where we're looking at the foundation paper for Edexcel. And if you follow the link below in the description, you'll be able to download this paper. Have a go at some of the questions for yourself. Uh, the whole idea is each video is going to be about 20 to 30 minutes in length. And I'll give you the opportunity to keep stopping and starting. Have a go at each of the questions. In the last video, we finished at question number 27. So we're going to start here with question number 28. Okay, and this works out, asks us to work out the values of x and y in a parallelogram, okay? Well, the important thing with a parallelogram is you need to recognize some of the properties. In this particular case, this angle is equal to this angle. So what we're basically saying is 5x minus 20 equals 2x plus 43. And then really it's just a case of solving and working out the value of x. Um, and like we always do with these type of questions, we need to make sure that we balance around this equal sign. So I've got this 2x here, I need to bring it over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to minus 2x. If I minus 2x, this right hand side becomes 43. The left hand side becomes 5x minus 2x is 3x minus 20. Remember, I haven't done anything with the minus 20 until now. And what I do then is I'm going to add it to both sides. So I'm going to take this minus 20 and put it over here. So that means on the left hand side I end up with 3x, on the right hand side I end up with 63. Okay, if I then divide through by 3, I can say that x equals 21. Okay, so the first part of my question, I've worked out x equals 21. Okay, the second bit is I need to work out the value of y. Now, um, what we're saying is, is that these two angles, remember I mentioned that you need to know the properties of a parallelogram. Well, these two angles added together are going to equal to 180 degrees. So let's just write that out. I got 5x minus 20 plus 4y minus 5x equals 180. OK, now what you could do is you could plug in this value of x. So you could do 5 times 21 here, which is going to be 105. But what you might notice is that if you do that, you've got that value and that value, which are going to be exactly the same. So you can kind of shortcut this by just simply getting rid of them because you've got 5x minus 5x is, well, it's nothing. So you can get rid of them and just say, well, I'm left with minus 20 plus 4y equals 180. OK, I need to get my y's on one side and my numbers on the other. So I'm going to take this minus 20 and put it over here by adding it in this case because it's a minus sign. So if I add it, I'm going to get 4y equals 200. OK, so 4 lots of y equal 200. So if I divide through by 4, I'm going to get then that y equals 50. So in answer to my question, or the question, here I can say that x equals 21 and y equals 50 and that will answer this particular question. Okay let's have a look then at question number 28 which is actually the last bit of this particular paper now or the last um, 29 and 30 are going to be the last two questions in this particular paper. Okay um, it has been quite a long paper and um, some of the questions towards the end are a little bit tricky because they are reflecting the new uh, curriculum, uh, particularly perhaps question number 30, which we'll come into in a minute. OK, so with question number 29, I need to describe the single transformation that maps A onto B. Well, it's not an enlargement. I haven't actually enlarged it. What I have done is I have moved it. And what you need to spot is that I've actually rotated it. So um, the main thing is with this is that you need to spot that it's um, a rotation of 90 degrees about the origin, which is zero. And that actually is the answer to the question. But I just need to kind of just uh, go over that a little bit by using a bit of tracing paper. The reason I'm going to use a bit of tracing paper is hopefully you'll see if I put tracing paper over it, and then I 
draw this triangle A in there, okay? If I put my pen in place here, <laughs> I don't know whether this is going to show on the video, but then if I swivel this around a little bit, I can't get hold of it, if I swivel this around a little bit, okay, what I can see is I'm moving it, moving it, moving it, moving it, moving it, and then it just drops into place like that. Now, it isn't a great video, it isn't a great drawing, but hopefully you'll be able to experiment with this a little bit um, at home and have a go at this. But hopefully you'll see then that it is a 90 degree uh, rotation around the zero, zero axis, uh, the, the origin point. Now let's say I didn't know that. Let's say, well, I'm going to take a guess and I'm going to say it's going to be, say, this minus one, zero point. Well, if I do that again, assuming I can grab the paper, but if I do that again, what you'll find is, is that when I rotate it around, I won't be able to get it in the same place. It's only going to work when I put my pen on zero, zero. And it doesn't really matter where I put my rotation point. Um, all of them will be incorrect except for the zero, zero point with this particular question. But you will need to experiment with this and see if you can kind of figure out each time where it's going to be. I happen to know that it was zero, zero. OK, and there it is. And again, I'm going to rotate it around just to show you. I happen to know it was zero, zero. And that's just really down to a little bit of practice and recognising how this works. OK, so in answer to the question, what I'm going to do is um, write that down as that is a 90 degree clockwise rotation Um, around, um, you can put if you want origin, but it's probably better to put it as zero, zero. Um, I hope that's okay for you. Please do find some uh, questions on rotations and transformations. They do come up fairly regularly on these sorts of papers, so it's well worthwhile having a go and practice with those. Okay, this is the next uh, question, which is the final question on the paper. It's question number 30, and it says, work out B minus 2A as a column vector. All right, this is a new topic um, for the new curriculum. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work out 2A. OK, so at the moment I've got A as a vector. Well, 2A is going to be the same as saying two lots of three, which is six, and two lots of minus seven, which is minus 14. OK, so that's 2A. And then if I want to work out B minus 2A, which the question asked me to do, what I'm going to do is just make a very big vector like this, where I'm going to put four and two, which is the value of B. And then I've got this value of 2a. Well, it's minus 6 here, OK, and minus minus 14. OK, and this is where you have to be a little bit careful with these things. So I end up with 4 minus 6. Well, that's going to be minus 2. And then I end up with 2 minus minus 14. Well, those two and minus and minus together make a plus. So that's going to be 16 at the bottom. And that would be the answer to this particular question. So it has been a fairly short video, but I wanted to cut it back just to show you these two questions. Uh, do have a go at um, some of the questions that I'm sure your teacher or from Three Minute Maths have a go at some of the questions on there just to reinforce this sort of area. Um, I hope it's been useful to you. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure. I'll always uh, come back to you and I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.